Have you always wanted to use the weapon Revision Zero? Well, now is the time because the exotic mission for this week is Operation Seraph Shield. For my folks that have not gotten this weapon and have not completed Operation Seraph Shield, this is the guide for you. Now, keep in mind, you can only play this mission if you own either the Witch Queen or Season of the Seraph. But you be checking them receipts, man. Now, if you do not have Revision Zero, just like the previous exotic weapons, you need to run this mission on normal difficulty first. This will get the initial drop of the exotic and then afterwards you could then start to farm out for this weapon now first we're going to touch on the mechanics of how this mission works if you're familiar with deep stone crypts then you're going to be able to easily understand these mechanics as they're basically just ripped from that raid and placed right into this mission now if you never ran dsc this is what you need to know there are three mechanics or augments that you acquire via pickups that enemies drop during the mission scanner is the yellow one operator is the red one suppressor is the blue one. Now here is how each of these augments work. Scanner allows you to interact with terminals throughout the mission, which will be glowing in yellow. Operator will allow you to see the red glowing panels that you have to shoot, which do various things like open doors and activate platforms. Suppressor will allow you to lower those immunity shields on those bosses towards the end of the mission. And in the rooms where Suppressor is available, you'll see those floating spheres around the area. And when you have Suppressor, these will glow blue. And when you stand underneath these spheres while you have the suppressor augment you'll be able to shoot the boss this will open doors and then lead to shootable objects that once destroyed will lower the boss's shields now with that out of the way you can begin the mission via the legends tab in the director and it's going to spawn you outside of the facility allowing you to instantly be targeted by the towers surrounding the area this is by far the most annoying part now if the lasers from these towers are on you for more than 15 seconds at a time you will die so you just want to make your way towards the diamond as you hide from the lasers on the way but upon making your way to the door you need to kill the ogre in front of it and then you can make your way through now you're gonna have to traverse over and under some laser traps these of course will kill you if you touch them and these traps are consistent throughout this mission so get used to jumping over things or sliding under them eventually you'll reach a room where you need the scanner augments kill the fallen carrying it and then pick it up everyone on your team can also pick up these augments so you don't have to wait for one of your fire team members to activate everything now once you have scanner within this room a terminal will start glowing once you hack that terminal another will glow and then another after that and once all are hacked the orbital drop pods will descend allowing your team to each take one up into space yeah you like that now once in the space station head up to the right and deposit your scanner augments into the terminal now you'll have to bank augments into terminals throughout this mission in order to open some doors so just keep that in mind in this next room you'll have some enemies and another scanner augment now this will highlight another terminal near you and then another through a pane of glass. To reach this terminal, you'll need to go through a small vent in the wall, and when activated, more enemies will spawn, and there will be a third terminal for you to hack. Now, this will open the door where you need to deposit your augment into the terminal to reach the next room. Now, here you'll have to clear out enemies and grab the scanner again. The first terminal to hack will be on the left behind a pillar. To get to the second terminal, you'll want to head straight across from that pillar to a vent in the wall behind the few shanks spawning in. Head through this vent into a room full of lasers with a terminal at the back. Avoid the lasers and then hack the terminal to deactivate them. Once you leave this room, you'll see another terminal glowing, but it's behind a pane of glass. You'll need to remember which of these terminals are glowing, whether it's one, two, three, or four. You can then deposit your scanner augment into the terminal nearby, which will open a door that leads to a room behind that pane of glass. Here you'll see four consoles, and you just want to interact with the one corresponding to the glowing terminal you saw before. Now, if you interact with the wrong one, you die. If done correctly, it will open up a new door and you can continue forward. Now here you'll have a bunch of turrets raining down on you as you platform your way up. You'll eventually come to a large room full of more turrets and other enemies. Clear out this entire room and grab the scanner augment. This room features two floors. The top floor has a pane of glass that you can see through that will show glowing terminals lining the walls. The bottom floor has another pane of glass that you can see through that will show a glowing path on the floor. Now this glowing path is the safe path. That's the one you can walk on. Now, 
town. If you step on a tile that is not glowing, this will kill everyone in the room. Now, the best way to do this is just have two people on your team with scanner. One scanner looks through the glass on the top floor and another one looks through the glass on the bottom floor. And this will help direct their teammates across the glowing path to the correct terminals. Granted, if you have a good memory, you could just do it yourself. Now, once this is complete and all three correct terminals are hacked, the room will deactivate and everyone will be able to enter and run to the next room. Now, here you will be introduced to the operator buff. Pick it up and shoot the glowing red panel next to the door to open it. Take down the hive in this next hallway and then have the operator shoot the red panel in the room to the left. This will open the next door with more hive to kill, including a couple shriekers. Next, the operator needs to find a vent in the wall to crawl through. And at the end of the vent, there will be an opening where you can see another red panel. Shoot it and then crawl back through the vent, guys. On the other side of the room, there will now be another vent you can crawl through, which leads into a room full of hive. Clear them out and then look through the glass pane on the far side of the room to shoot the last panel. Head back to the original hallway through the vent and you'll have a new door that just opened up to go through. Now, these next couple rooms will just be you clearing out enemies. But once you get to the room with the yellow bar captain, try to move slowly and don't instantly melt him as this mission used to bug out if you killed him too quickly. Somebody let me know in the comments below if this has actually been fixed, but that used to be a bug and I'm going to assume that it still is. So just take your time when melting him. Now, once you do kill the captain, he will drop a key. Then you have to bank your augment in the terminal to open the door to the first boss encounter. Now, to begin this fight, you want to shoot the explosive barrels at the center of the room. The boss will spawn in and once damaged enough, two bricks will spawn at the back of the room on the left and right sides. Take them out, kill the ants, basically just slay out. There's no crazy mechanics here. And once done, a door will open up at the back of the room. Head inside and surrender your weapons to the fallen. The servitor will then teleport you to the catch where you actually will get your weapons back and now you're going to be fighting through the ship. You have to activate some terminals as you go, but these don't really require any augments. Now, once you're through the ship, then you're onto the platforming part of this mission. Essentially, what you want to do is follow the red glowing lights on the platforms until you reach an enemy with the operator augments. Take them out, grab the augments, then you have to shoot three red panels around you, which will show right here on the screen. Now, these panels will activate platforms that allows you to keep platforming further. You'll eventually reach a hangar with a bunch of hive and a few ogres. Deal with them. Then in the falling room, a big hive yellow bar will spawn in and no concern here, guys, you can instantly melt them. Now head on through the door to the next room and grab the operator augments. You'll have a panel to shoot that will open a door that leads to the scanner augments. Have someone grab that, hack the few terminals around you, which will open the next door. And in here, you will do the same thing. There will be an operator panel to shoot on a pillar hanging from the ceiling, which will open a door to a sign room where the scanner can hack a terminal to activate the teleporter, which will bring you to the next area. Now keep moving forward and clearing enemies until you find the Vandal with the suppressor augments. Once you pick it up, you'll see the glowing spheres we talked about earlier. Stand underneath each one and shoot the yellow bar servitor. This will open up a door that leads to a shield generator and destroying this will lower the servitor shield, allowing you to kill it and then move on to the next room where you will find the final boss. Now, if you made it this far, this encounter luckily is very simple. You're going to have ads spawning in all around you, but they're manageable. How this encounter works is once you deal a third of the boss's health, they'll become immune. You have to find the vandal carrying the suppressor augments, grab it, then stand underneath each of the glowing blue spheres and shoot the boss. There will be a sphere on the right, left, and center of the room. Now, once you've shot the boss while standing under each of those suppressor spheres, three doors will open up revealing three shield generators that must be destroyed. These generators will be on the far left side of the room, the far right side of the room and right in the center below where the boss spawns in. Once destroyed, the boss's shields will lower and you can continue doing damage. Essentially here, guys, rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. Then follow the diamond to hack the terminal in the next room to finish the mission and claim your reward, which will be a craftable exotic pulse rifle called Revision Zero. Now we've done a number of deep dives on this weapon and nothing has really changed about these rolls. So where I stood on this weapon after its reworks and and it's buff is pretty much where I stand on it now. Now, when you complete Operation Seraph Shield, you'll also get one of the four intrinsics if you have yet to get one of them. So if you only just got the gun, you can keep completing the mission until you have unlocked the intrinsics Hunter's Trace 2 through 4. Now, each intrinsic you unlock will also give Revision Zero stat bumps and unlock more perks for crafting. Hunter's Trace 2 will give you access to more barrels. Hunter's Trace 3 will unlock the traits. 
and then Hunter's Trace 4 will unlock the stocks. Now, to unlock each of the four catalysts for Revision Zero, you will have to run the mission on Legendary Difficulty. Now, guys, I already have Revision Zero. I've got the catalysts. I've also got the intrinsics. But if it works like Box Obscura, we would actually run just Legend over and over, and we would get double the drop. So we would actually get the trait that we were going for, plus the intrinsic. Granted, I am not sure if that's how things work here. But again, normal mode will unlock all the intrinsics. Legend mode will unlock the catalyst. Now, the catalyst for Revision Zero include Frenzy Refit, which grants you Feeding Frenzy, not the perk Frenzy. Pressurized Refit, which grants you Under Pressure. Outlaw Refit, which grants you Outlaw. And the Four Timer Refit, giving your Revision Zero four times the charm. And considering how Revision Zero works, with it being a pulse rifle and then converts to a sniper rifle, these catalysts right here, guys, can make a big difference. Now, other rewards you can also get from Operation Seraph Shield include Fire and Forget, Tripwire Canary, Disparity, Path of Least Resistance, Judgment of Kelgrath, Retrofit Escapade, which was literally the meta at one time, the Ikelos weapons, and the Warmind's Avatar armor sets. Again, all of those weapons are craftable, and this is a catch-up mechanic for folks that did not get these weapons during the season it was dropping. So guys, good luck to you this week. We will also pin down below our most recent review of Revision Zero, if you want to check that out. This is a very unique pulse rifle, but for the most part, nothing has really changed about it. I was kind of hoping more to be added to the weapon in terms of its trait combinations, but feel free to check out our entire deep dive and review on that exotic. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.